So I want you to open the scriptures. If you may, go to the scriptures, please. And uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. We're going to be talking about the unshakable faith. This faith that cannot be shaken. Uh, if you go to Habakkuk, oh, first let's go to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. And we're going to go to 28. And this is what the Bible says. Uh, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised saying, yet once more, I will shake not the earth only, but also heaven. In the next, in this decade, you will see things falling from the sky. That's what this verse says. In the next decade, you will see a collapse on the satellites. In this ne next decade, you will see things that you've never seen before. So God said, I will once more shake not the earth only, but also the heaven. Verse 27. And these words, yet once more, signifies that removing those things which can be shaken, such as things that are made, are those things that cannot be shaken, may remain. Every shaking comes to see what is of God. When the shaking comes, anything that is not of God in your life will be removed. People, places, and things will be shaken. Verse 28, and this is the powerful. Therefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby... We may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Um, let me speak to you today as we, the next 45 minutes, you already three, take, took three of my minutes. So I, I, I'm going to speak to you about this unshakable faith. If you are home, I want you to say unshakable faith. You know, the faith... Uh, let me open this statement to you. Throughout the crisis, God has used me to bring the Rema word for this moment and to establish the people and the present truth. And the church of Jesus Christ is looking for answers. Unfortunately, message of encouragement do not bring answers. But what they do is pacify those answers. And until you give the people answers, they will never be free. Because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you, God is using apostles and prophets in the end time to answer some questions to men and to us and to the church in this crisis. I believe it is very dangerous to live without a present truth. Because it's very dangerous. We have seen in the church of Jesus Christ, and this now message of faith also will bring to you a perspective. Perspective is nothing more than the way you see things. And the times we're living in, we have to bring God's perspective into the people. God's perspective is how God sees things. How God sees things, problems and issues and circumstances in life. So we see that we live in a, in, in a time where faith has been replaced, substituted by many things like positive thinking, like um, uh, optimism. Uh, faith has been replaced and reduced to something natural. We see believers frustrated because they haven't seen the result of their faith. And we have seen a people because they walk in an a replacement, not in true faith. When crisis comes, you make sure you got the true faith. Yesterday's faith 
doesn't work in today's economy. For sure. And, and because the challenges we are facing are now bigger. Your faith is not working. And the reason is that if your faith is not working, it's because you do not have a now relationship with God. That's where your faith comes from. The now faith comes from your relationship with God now. If you say, I am struggling to believe, you are saying, I don't have a now relationship with God. This is a time that the Bible says, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. This is so powerful. The Lord has revealed to me something so powerful. I've been literally soaking in the word and the revelation about faith. There's so many things I saw before. And, and this time when I went back and I said, oh my God, this is so incredible. Behold, his soul is, is which lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. There are one, two, three, four. There are three, I would say three keys to walk and to operate and to live by faith in that verse. I will not teach it now. I will teach it at 11 o'clock. <laughs> there are three keys to operate and to produce your faith. So the corporate church, if you ask me now, has treated faith as an option. In other words, not as a lifestyle. And I know they're not walking in faith because they're not committed to believe. In other words, they say, if it happens, it's God. If it doesn't happen, it's not God. That means you were never committed to believe anything. So the child of God has an option in the times we're living in to walk by two ways, two options, by faith or by sight. So there's something uh, in history. We hear at the point in history that when everything has to be by faith and the just has no another option, and this is a commandment, by the way. A commandment is when God gives a commandment is to say you don't have no other option but to live by your faith. We are in a prophetic age where we see prophecies being fulfilled before our eyes. And the purpose of this shaking, whenever you see the shaking now, is to reveal who you are and to reveal what you believe. What, who are you in this crisis, in this new economy? Who are you? I can tell you who I am. Be I am the remnant of God. And the remnant is the one that is believing until the end. So nobody has a now faith unless you have a now word. That is something to post right there. No one has a now faith. Historical faith, the faith you use to get your children get healed. The faith you use to uh, get the miracle in your finances, it doesn't work anymore because the problems are bigger now. The problems are, the circumstances, the difficulties are bigger. So nobody has a now faith unless you have a now word. And I can go testimonies after testimonies that how my walk of faith has been. Many times, oh, the majority of times, God asked me things that had no, make no sense. And God asked me things to do. Because in the Bible, every time God asked a man of God to do something, made no sense. Because faith doesn't work with your reason. And if you go in through the whole testimony, I remember when God said to me, I want you to build, build me a house of prayer, a house of worship. And then he said, and I said, God, I do it. I just, I didn't think it twice. 
And the problem is, I needed $30 million in that time. And I only had a word and no money. So I just went by faith. And I acted on faith. I moved in faith. And I saw in 28 months how God provided so much money that I did not have. So I have bought and sell, not money. I have moved and I went to countries by faith. In other words, I just purposely put my faith into it. So if I define faith today, I can give you testimonies after testimonies after testimonies. Blessed be God for that powerful, unshakable faith. Blessed be God. Sometimes when I, I remember I, I went to present the gospel to one of the presidents of the earth of the United of, of <laughs> some places. And I have moved in faith. I didn't understand, but God gave me that faith to, to do it. I can give you testimonies in my finances. I can give you testimonies how I pay, I pay off my house. I sold and I believed for five years. And I never saw that mortgage going down. But I kept believing. And I said, God, I see my house pay off. It's pay off. I know that. So I keep believing there's a certainty. When you walk by faith, there's a certainty. That's what the Bible is. the substance of the things hoped for. There's something, a, a security in your heart that you know, that you know what you know, that you acting in faith. One of the evidences that you acting in faith is that you have, you, I would say you not reason things. In other words, you don't start thinking about it. So this is so powerful. So we understand my introduction is that today in today's economy, the past faith doesn't work. And so many people are replacing faith. They're frustrated because they said nothing is happening. Yeah, of course, because it's not faith. So I would say I'm going to give you certain definitions of faith. And this is so powerful because when we go, when, go into it, I can give you so many definitions of faith. I can give you 50 definitions of faith. But let me give you some. Faith is a means to know God. In other words, is a mean, is a way to know God. People that know God don't struggle to believe. If you know God, in other words, faith is a mean to know him. Faith is a mean to access the spirit dimension. Faith is a mean to access the supernatural. Faith is a means to, uh, by, means by, by, by we can perceive the spirit dimension. Faith is a means to give to men to walk in the supernatural. Faith is a means to believe the unreasonable and the impossible. In other words, faith has been given to you. And I like this one. Faith is the ability of God given to men. This is so powerful. For men to believe above and beyond the natural. That is the key. I want you to write it down. Faith is the ability of God given to men to believe above and beyond. Above and beyond um, impossibilities above and beyond the laws of nature i love above and beyond reason so faith is the ability given by god to man to believe something that doesn't make sense faith and and why if you ask me today and i want you to write it down at home again keep connecting if you ask me today and you say apostle why the necessity of faith in today's economy Number one, this is very powerful. Number one, because faith is the ability to believe God. I'm going to say it again. Faith is the ability to believe God. You can't believe, you can only believe God by faith. I'm going to say it again. It sounds so simple, but it's so profound. In other words, faith is given to me and to you to believe God. Have you heard that expression, I am believing God? But what does that mean to you? When you say, I am believing God, 
are you really? If you believe in God, because people, you cannot believe God, um, you can only believe God by faith. In other words, you can't believe God by your education. Wisdom of men, opinions, traditions. If you try to believe from your tradition, you won't be able to do it. Only by faith. That is the meaning. That is the mean. That is the, the way to believe God. So you say, why we need the necessity of faith today? Because you can only believe God in crisis. You can only believe God by faith. Number two, this is powerful. The supernatural is a reality by the way of our faith. To live today above the reality of what is happening, you need the supernatural. And the supernatural is real to us by the way of faith. Faith is a reality of the supernatural. Number two, this is powerful. Number three, faith is a portal, a window to the supernatural. In the supernatural dimension is where everything is already done. In the supernatural dimension is what we need to be, to live above and beyond. So we need those three things. We need those three things. We understand now. So if I get into more into faith, I would say it's the ability of God to believe God. In other words, everybody says, oh, I believe God. I am believing God, meaning that I am, I am seeing, when I'm saying I am believing God, I am saying I am believing beyond what I see, what I hear, beyond my senses. I am believing God for a miracle. I am believing God for healing. I'm believing God for supernatural provision. What you are saying, you are saying you are believing above and beyond. So faith is a walk. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, you see the definition, you see the introduction, now you see how faith is a supernatural walk. Look at this. So we walk by faith. I want you to say at home and repeat it out loud. And everybody here in the studio, say, we walk by faith. Yeah, but you sound like you, you're still asleep. Okay, yeah, I can hear you at home. Okay, we walk by faith, not by sight. Say it again. We walk by faith, not by sight. I'm going to say it again. We walk by faith, not by sight. Say it again. What does that mean? What does that mean? Let me break. I'm going to start breaking down all the definition. Faith, then, if it's a walk, because faith is a walk. Faith is a supernatural walk. Faith is a supernatural walk because the word walk means to advance. You, you, if you're walking, you're advancing. We walk, we advance from faith to faith. Romans chapter 117, from, from faith to faith. In other words, when you walk in in faith, when you walk in, faith is a supernatural walk. Faith, and this is so powerful. Therefore, the just shall live by faith. And then he said, um, shall live by faith. 117, God's revealed from faith to faith. In other words, it's from one level of faith to another level of faith. Every day, we must believe something bigger. Every day, challenge your faith. I'm going to sow seed that I never sowed before. I'm going to believe something that I never believed before. I'm going to do something that I, because faith is a walk. If you're not, fear is containing you. Fear doesn't let you walk. Faith is a walk. In other words, doesn't, there's no such a thing as faith stagnant. And you say, I'm walking by faith, but what are you doing? Are you moving? Are you advancing? So faith is the starting point of the supernatural. And this is so powerful. If you never walk by faith, you never walk in the supernatural. 